Cute dragons on cards. Let's turn them up and play Dragon Keepers. Hi, I'm Libby, this is Nikki and we're from Cosmos and we're here today to teach you how to play Dragon Keepers and how to word your dragons to best benefit with points. So this is a lovely family weight game which plays up to four players yeah. and you are going to be collecting these lovely dragons and gaining as many points as possible. So this is how we're going to set it up, okay? We've got um, our book here, our magic book. And then this bit here in front of the display, and as we are taking cards, we'll be turning that over. To start off the game, we're going to have starting cards. So the first player doesn't have one, everybody else has one in a quiet direction, or two, oh, or three. Yeah, depending on how many players, that will change as to how many you get. You can tell the starting cards from the ribbons there. So because we're playing two players, there's only one starting card in hand, Nikki gets the one. But if we had three players for example nikki would have one and then the next player would have two of them but as the starting player i don't continue you don't but you do get first go which is quite nice get first go. you do um there are obviously different changes when whether you're playing as we said before uh, two to four players so for the two player game we'll be taking the 16 and we're out of the way uh over here we've got a variety of different pieces that are going to be helpful to us we've got our shadow dragons which are wild cards mm -hmm. we have got some little kind of gems which give us a free go once we're going we get some eggs, which will come up. We'll explain those in a moment. And we have some trials, which we'll also explain as we go through it. Yep. So if I do a little example of what you might do on your turn, you can see the cards here in the book. Um, some of them have a number on them and some symbols of some of the things that Nikki's discussed. And then others have the coloured dragon on the back. They will be split into this order. So all of the coloured dragons are in this stack and all of the numbered cards are in this stack. So on my turn, I'll be choosing three dragon cards from the display area, not from here, um, to Pull into my hand. Um, so, for example, if I take this one, it will then replace, and I can choose now between these two. If I have another one of those, um, that will again replace, and then perhaps I'll take this green one, which will change here. So, that is the end of my selection from my turn. This is now telling me that if I was to play one orange dragon, I would then receive the lowest pointed of the pieces of the amulet plus one of the crystals, which, as Nikki was saying, will give me a chance later in the game to take an additional turn so I can pick up maybe four dragons instead of the usual three dragons. Um, so, unfortunately, I don't actually have any orange dragons in my hand at the moment. And um, I don't know what Nikki has, but I mean, She's just showing us how she is either. So my choice would be, do I use the cards that are in my hand? And um, you can see they have different numbers and colours on the back of them in order to change what the book says to still be able to herd a dragon and place it in my player area. Or do I continue to Nikki's turn, hoping that she can't lay dragons either? Um we would see. So the problem I have at the moment is that I can't really change the book to something that I can place. So I could change it to a blue dragon, but I have no blue dragons in my hand. I could change the number, but I don't have any orange dragons. So there's nothing I can do at this stage. So my turn is over and I'm choosing not to play any dragons into my play area. At this point, in most games, you would think, okay, right, it's now Nikki's turn and she would be picking up her dragons, but not in Dragon Keepers. In Dragon Keepers, you have almost like a follow action for everyone else at the table. So I haven't been able to lay one orange dragon. If Nikki could, she would be able to, and she would still pick up these benefits here that are printed on the back of the, of the number card. So the amulet on the crystal, if she was able to. Once everyone's had the opportunity in turn order to potentially lay that, it then moves over onto the next player's turn. So in this case, it's now Nikki's me. turn. <laughs> Absolutely. So I don't need to take three, but I don't want to I've picked up to three cards. So but I'm thinking, actually, I think I'm going to take a few. So I'm going to take that one there because I'm just starting off. I'm going to take a number one as well. I'm not so keen on this four here. I think I might give that a bit of a swap. So I'll take this one here. That hasn't really helped me that much, has it? Because it's unlikely <laughs> I'm going to have five blue dragons. I'm just going to show you what I have got. Okay, so 
I am going to try and change this. So I want to change it to a different number. What's interesting when you're looking to change the numbers or the colours in the book is that, of course, the cards have them on the back so that when they're placed in the book uh, placement area, you can see what they have clearly. But you can also see here that it's actually printed on the front of the card. So when you're looking at them in your hand, if you look at this area here, you'll know what the back says. So this green dragon actually turns the book to an orange dragon and this white dragon here has a four on the back, which would gain you one of those golden eggs. Absolutely. So in my go, I'm actually, I'm going to swap this over. I think I'm going to turn this into a one. I'm going to do one blue dragon. So I'm going to lay this out. One blue dragon here. I'm going to take the lowest one of these. I've got that friend. I'm going to turn it over so I don't see the number. And I'm going to take myself a crystal. And I'm going to lay it out here. Now we can have four sections here, but there's a rather interesting rule in Dragon Keepers in that if I was to lay out, say, a blue, and then next time I had a red, and next time I had a green, I couldn't then play the ones in the middle. I can only play the outside too. So that actually is a really strategic little little cranny there. You have to kind of get your head round to try and figure out what you're going to do. So yeah, you're not laying out like set collection where they're kind of in rows. You're putting the colours on top of the stacks. Yeah. You only ever have up to four stacks of the coloured dragons. Um, but as Nikki was saying, if you enclose both sides of any of those colours, you're then not able to play them again. So it does really become very strategic in terms of what you're gathering, what you're collecting and, and where you're kind of trying to score the most. And that's also where the crests come in, because although you might miss out on the opportunity to perhaps score the card of the, the stack of dragons that are in the middle that are blocked off the first player who puts out all four colors of dragons gets to take the highest score of quest so it's that balance between do i want to hold fire and still be able to do something with something else or do i want to gain those points now and see if we can race to the end because i might be able to win in that way instead Absolutely. So I've had my go. So now we're going to play the round out. So it's now yep. going to be Libby's turn. And unfortunately, I don't have any blue dragons. So mm. again, I haven't been able to place anything. And because it's my turn and not Nikki, uh, because it's my Nikki's turn, turn not, your... <laughs> not my turn, I'm not able to change the book. You can only change the book if it's your actual turn that round. And everyone else can only take a follow action of, of doing what is left in the display once player whose turn it is had the opportunity to change the book and you can't play something that the book previously said it has to be after it's either been changed or not changed and the and the player has agreed that that's what they're happy with in the book on their turn and then everyone can do that action if they so choose absolutely we haven't spoke about these lovely little pearls here there are some that are in the red color and the remainder are in the blue um, this is because once you complete one of your amulets, so well, the amulets come in pieces of three, and when you lay them out, you're laying them face down, as Nikki said, on the table, and they complete this little circle. So this is a completed amulet. Once you have achieved that, you can then pick up one of the pearls to come in the center. If you do that early in the game, you get to pick up a red one. These ones are pointed on the other side and the red ones have higher points than the blue ones so that's why you would want to get there and finish an amulet early in the game however because the amulets often score from lowest points to highest points if you have the earlier ones the chances are the numbers that are surrounding your amulet will be lower whereas higher in the game where the center pearls will be lower scoring points for example this one's four whereas one of those was eight um, you're more likely to have higher points surrounding your amulet and depending on the player count will depend on how many amulets you need to complete in this manner before the game ends and that will be what triggers the game end. Absolutely the one exception to the rule as far as taking the lowest um, amulet is there are some cards that will have a crown on um, and the crowns mean that you will take from the top, but obviously these are much harder to do. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be really tricky. Yeah, that does tend to be in the fives yeah. and also in the sixes, the wild card. That one allows you to take the highest pointed and the lowest pointed card. So it's great to use these black dragons, not only as wild cards where they can fill up the space of another dragon to increase the number that you have when you're trying to play those down. You can also use them to change the book if you've been collecting blues for example then you can definitely 
spike up your score by using that to score with. Absolutely. The shadow dragons we can only use uh, along with something else. You couldn't just lay down one shadow dragon. It would have mm -hmm. to be in conjunction with, for example, five other blues or whatever. One of the other interesting components we have here in the game are these golden eggs. Um, now, whenever you have one of the fours, for example, you, as usual, get to take your lowest score amulet, but you also get to gain a golden egg. Now, the golden eggs are worth four points, but at the end of the game, if you have the most eggs, you're able to flip one over and that will gain you 16 points. So it really can make a difference if you've been egg collecting throughout the game. So we're coming towards the end of the game here. Um, Libby's got three amulets, I've got three amulets, and obviously for a two-player game, it's seven amulets, this game is finished. Um, as you can see, how we've got it set out here, I've actually got four rows here. Um, so for that, I've got the, the 10 crest. Uh, it does mean that I cannot place the blues and the greens, which is something that Libby's going to keep in mind when she's deciding what to put on her book, because she's going to change it. Yes, you know, I if, am. If she because... could put it down that I can't use, then... <laughs> I'm just messed up, let's say. So I've got obviously more at the ends here. I'm going for these two here. Um, I can play both green and blue, which puts me in a great position compared with Nikki. I also have the ability to put the whites either side and deciding which of the green or blue I might block off, depending on how I feel like Nikki's hat's going, perhaps. <laughs> Towards the end of the game, once we get to completing that last amulet then we will go into scoring which will mean that we'll be looking at not only the points that we've now hidden on our amulets but also of course the pearls who's getting to flip an egg and um any crests like for example nikki obviously has her 10 point crest for having all of her dragon colors out in play so once we go through we can point all of that that's not it with Dragon Keepers. There's also some extra bits in the box. So once you've got really familiar with this mode of play, which we think is actually really excellent and great for families and a, a nice filler game as well. It's easy to travel with because it's yeah. quite compact. But in there, you've actually got some extra scoring sort of little, little cards here. Um, which can add different rules and things to make the game even better. And much more thinky to decide how you're going to use these different special powers. And also if you're playing with kids as well, there's no reason why you can't just take out the rule where you can't lay on all of them. You can actually just say to your kids, okay, you can lay on any of them. And then maybe as an adult, you'll say, okay, I can only lay on the outside. This makes it a little fairer, really, when you're playing with smaller children. Yeah, there, that is in the rule book as a little adaptation yeah. for playing with younger children. So uh, it does make it nice and flexible. Mm. We also have brought out a new promo um, for this game which um, has recently um, released and will be available at UK Games Expo and other conventions in the future and that is the Elder Dragon Prophecy um, and that adds some more tiles that you add into the game and you'll get different points depending on what placement you have your dragons in so you'll pull different tiles depending on the game you're playing that, that will add some variety and the first people to place out in the correct order of their dragons will get various points depending on the card there so that also adds more thinkiness more trying to point maximize yes, and a little bit of analysis paralysis perhaps if you're trying to um decide whether you actually want to have the points from the prophecy or you want to have the uh the points from laying them out as, as, as you are really so yeah it's tricky so that's everything that you need to know about Dragon Keepers. If you have any questions, of course, do pop those into the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Have you been playing Dragon Keepers? Do you love it? Aren't those dragons cute? Yeah, really. <laughs> have you seen our little mascot at any of our any of our conventions that we've been to? Yes, we have our little friend, our little Highland friend in plush form because he's too cute not to, right? Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Of course, if you're not subscribed to the channel, we would love it if you would do so. And um, we do have a sister channel as well, which focuses on some of our STEM and toys and different things as well. So if you're interested in some of that, do head over and subscribe to that one too. But um, in the meantime, we'll be popping up more game information for you to keep an eye on both Cosmos and Devere games here on the channel. So we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.